this is the Galilee podcast. I am your host and today I have an amazing, amazing, amazing um, person coming in today. <laughs> um, Caleb Carey is actually the one that did the intro that you heard there at the beginning. Um, and so we're just really thankful for him. So Caleb, go ahead and introduce yourself. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on. Um, <laughs> Marianne said I'm Caleb Carey. Uh, the most pertinent, I guess, information on here and like who I am is uh, I've been in sales for the last six years, um, up until about a month ago where I've done a complete 180 job switch, but we can talk about that uh, as we kind of go through here. Um, but yeah, just uh, being in full-time sales right out of high school um, and then even traveling the country doing it. All right, great. So Caleb will be covering today um, how to deal with interesting customers, um, in other words, difficult customers. Um, but we are going to go ahead and have you pray, Caleb, and then we'll go right into it. All right. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. And I just pray that you bless this conversation in this podcast and we use it for your will um, and that you just shine your glory through it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, Caleb. So tell us, tell us what your thoughts are, how you've dealt with with people who come in and are just difficult sometimes. Yeah, so to give kind of a, a background and that way it kind of makes sense on the type of people that I've dealt with in the last six years or so. Uh, I've been in the golf industry my entire life. My father's worked at golf courses his entire life. Even my grandfather was in the golf industry for a period of time. So all of this is wrapped around the golf industry. However, it applies to every type of business and especially in sales and how to deal with customers and things like that. Um, the last for right out of high school, I started working at golf courses, working in the pro shops, which are merchandise, uh, retail, just all golf equipment, things like that. I also was a golf pro. I turned pro in 19, um, marketed myself as a golf teaching professional for four years. And then at the last two years, I've been working directly with a company called Club Champion, uh, building golf equipment and selling high-end retail golf equipment uh, directly to customers. So kind of like if you were to go into a car dealership and sit down with a guy and go, okay, this is what I want my car to be. I want these seats. I want this you know, steering wheel. I want this sound system, all of that stuff. That's essentially kind of what I was doing within the golf world um i'll just kind of put up a little preface like i i don't represent the company anymore i have nothing to do with that company at the moment um so i don't speak for them um but that's just kind of what i was doing um for the last several years i was blessed to be able to travel all over the country um working at many other different locations they're the biggest uh golf club fitter retailer in the country so i was able to um, go from Chicago to California to North Carolina, all over Virginia, um, fitting golf clubs and selling golf clubs directly to uh, a wide variety of people, anywhere from your, you know, plays once a year with his buddies because they force him to come out and play and he just wanted good equipment to go out and play to help him play better yeah. to uh, your tour players. Um, I've actually worked with several guys that are on the PGA Tour, um, also PGA Tour Canada, and, um, you know, getting their equipment that they're potentially going out and trying to make millions of dollars um, and when, you know, professional tournaments playing. Um, and then every guy in between there, you know, from CEOs and, you know, business owners to, uh, you know, your guy that goes out and just plays on the weekends with his buddies and is just out there to have a couple of beers, enjoy the sun and, get out and have some fun yeah so you've you've got gone to be with a lot of people <laughs> yes yeah. Yeah. yeah okay well can you give me a few examples as to how you would deal with someone coming in the door and maybe they're having a bad day and they're just pushing that on you and like how do you, how would you deal with something like that yeah i mean dealing with customers especially in the atmosphere that i was in you know you a lot of people feel a lot of pressure um, in the environment that they were coming into. I mean, they're coming into a world that 
they may know a lot of information about, but they've never been able to get the level of uh, experience or um, been in that type of environment before. So they're nervous and they're anxious and it's just a lot of, you know, it's like going in and taking a test that you've never taken before, you know, first time we've all gone and sat in the SATs you're all nervous you know you're kind of not really sure how you're going to do yeah that type of stuff um and you know especially for most people that I worked with they're amateur golfers so they're not you know amazing at it but they're out there they're trying to have fun so you know there's a lot of pressure um on that end so really it's being a, a cheerleader for your customer you know you want to be excited about what you're doing there. You want them to, you know, be happy to be there. Be, you know, right when they walk in the door, I always, I had just kind of a, you know, Mariana knows me, I, I'm a I'm comedian. I like to think I'm funny, um, you know, so <laughs> people come in the door, um, you know, hey, Mariana, great to see you today. Can I get you a drink? Can I get you a, a water, Gatorade coffee? You know, anything like that. Um, you know, what type of music do you want to listen to? We can, you know, if they happen to be the only people in there, let's jam to whatever music you want to listen to, you know, make everything uh, as all about them as possible right away. And then, yeah, I mean, the, the nerves are always there. So it's, you know, a smile and a laugh and a joke, you know, definitely goes a long way in trying to relieve the, the pressure a little bit, you know, get them kind of calmed down. Um, you know, even when I was you know, going back to 19, 20 years old, teaching people how to play golf, same thing. You're trying to just, hey, relax. You know, we're here to have a good time. I want to be able to see you in kind of your element. You know, what are we looking for? You know, let's, you know, spend a lot of time really getting to know the person first before, here's what I do and this is what I'm going to do. This is amazing. You know, it, it, and then they're sitting there going like, okay, this guy's, you know, full of himself. And they're, you know, this is, I feel like I'm getting sold something right away. It's you want to make it sure that everything's about them right away. Um, okay. well, I, I have a question regarding that. It, it wasn't in the list of questions that I gave, oh, but um, so a lot of the vendors that we have, um, everything's online for them, especially with COVID now, even if they had a business in person, it's, you know, they're kind of stopped at the moment. So how do you think that they could portray that feeling of, Hey, welcome. I'm here for you. Like, you know, that being super personable online. Yeah. Do you have any yeah. thoughts or ideas on that? Oh, definitely. I mean, just even though the business that I was in was very one-on-one -on -one in person, um, that was only your initial um, interaction. And even sometimes then it was, it didn't start out that way. It started out with an email, you know, someone booked an appointment online and I saw it, you know, pops up on my calendar. Oh, hey, John Smith is coming in and wants to get set up with some new golf clubs. Awesome. What I would do right away is either A, you can pick up the phone, B, email. Um, I had a blanket email kind of set up um, in my folder of, you know, favorited emails, go in, copy, paste it, put it in. But a lot of it is a hey, my name is Caleb. I'm going to be your master fitter today. You know, when you come in for your appointment, kind of mention whatever their appointment is, make it a little more personal. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what are you looking for? What are you, how long have you been doing it? How long have you been, you know, looking for something specific? What do you need help with? Or what are you looking to fill? You know, I kind of went on Galilee Life a couple of times. I see the type of things that people are um, putting on there, you know, oh cool you know how long have you been looking for artwork for your wall what is your specific style what can we kind of do to kind of help fill your space or you know what type of shirts do you like to wear what type of fit do you like what you know starting to put all those conversation starters out there ahead of time before even interacting with the person you know obviously for me it was to be in person but it's the same thing when you're putting it in an email or a voice message or however you want to kind of tackle that um, initial conversation. But I specifically used email almost all the time just because I didn't have time to pick up the phone. Um, and, you know, hey, this is my, you know, contact information. If you have any questions before we meet or, hey, do you have any questions at all, please let me know, you know, right away. So that way you're already, 
you know, getting that information out there and starting to build that relationship, you know, right off the, the bat. Yeah, well, I'm thinking that could translate to simply having really descriptive, um, just information about the product when someone clicks on it, right? And mm -hmm. making sure that you put your email in case they do have any questions. That might be a good exactly. tip. Exactly, um, especially if you're in like the custom world, you know, if you're really wanting to, you know, you have your kind of blanket things that you like to sell, but then also, hey, I also do custom work. Please let me know if you, there's anything that I can help you do, you know, whatever that looks like. Yes, absolutely. All right. So back to what you were saying. Yeah. Um, yes, 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 yes. About customers. And yeah. Yes. Yeah. So kind of the, the main thought of what we're kind of going to is the dealing with the difficult ones, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in doing it for long enough, um, I've definitely seen my share of your, you know, today's terminology, your Karens and your whatever, Karens and Kens and, uh, <laughs> and um, in, in dealing with them and, you know, my market was definitely more male based, you know, you're dealing with um, different people and people are very passionate about a lot of things that they do. And it could just be, you know, as simple as, you know, they're really into their clothing and what they buy and how they buy it and how they buy it, you know, who they buy it from and things like that. Yeah. Um, and you have your amazing customers that you can, you know, call text, you know, whenever they become friends. Um, I've got those, but then I've also got the guys that I've literally been cussed out and, you know, it's, how do you deal with that person is different for everyone. Um, but there are a couple of main things that you can kind of do to help smooth things out, you know, as you go through. Um, number one is speed. Handle it as fast as possible, as nice as you can. Because sometimes, you know, everyone says the customer's always right. Well, no, <laughs> they're not. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes they're just not. Um, but making sure that you head it off right away. I mean, just boom, no, you know, you get an email, say you sent them a product and it wasn't to their expectations or, you know, could be, you know, a shirt and it got damaged in shipping or a thread popped or something like that. Typically, um, internet warriors will come at you and it will seem like you sent them a piece of trash. I mean, it, they are so angry and you read the email and you're like, oh my goodness, what just happened? And you're in, it's, yeah. what do I do? Right away, if you have the ability to, a phone call is going to be much better served than a email response or a response to a review. Um, people tend to be a lot more receptive over the phone than they will on paper. Um, you know, I've had customers that have left reviews and that have sent emails that you're just looking at this going, oh my goodness, like this is a dumpster fire, right? Like this is bad. Mm. You call them on the phone and they are the happiest go lucky person in the world and they're so nice and everything is totally fine. <laughs> but on the keyboard they're a different animal yeah so a lot of it is getting in contact with them as fast as possible and have answers ready for them um the let me get back to you and see what i can do typically isn't going to be the answer that a lot of people want to hear um because we're a culture now that is now, yeah. right now done you know google it figure it out um and so having you know take your time to gather your information on how you need to handle a situation um you know i can kind of give an example of one uh a golf club is comprised of different parts you have the club head itself which is the part that hits the ball then you have the shaft itself that is holding the head to the grip which obviously is what you hold the shaft itself um, can do lots of different things. The head itself does a lot of different things. Grip does lots of different things as well. So my job was to put all of those together for somebody to make it perform the way that it needs to. Guy emailed me and the 
golf club didn't come in the way he wanted it to. It had some smudges on it, which were very easily wiped away. But, um, you know, he spent a lot of money on it. He spent about $1,000 for this one club. Yeah. So, you know, he sent me this email and was, let me have it on this email. It was about four paragraphs long to tell me that a smudge was on the driver. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, it, exactly. It's like, okay, that was excessive. Um, I called him and he was like, yeah, man, like I just, you know, that smudge is on there and I really just want to make sure that uh, that gets fixed. You know, can I get a new one? You know, however that works out, you know, do you have an answer? Yeah, man, um, send it to me. You know, here's a shipping label, ship it to me. I'll take care of it. I'll ship it right back to you. You know, hopefully I can get it back to you within a week, you know, overnight it, you know, take the hit, you know, there, there is a certain point of obviously, yes, we have a bottom line that we don't want to lose our profits by doing things, but at the end of the day, taking care of that customer and making sure that that is taken care of the right way and as fast as possible is going to be better than, oh yeah, send it, you know, five day shipping, I'll get it and then turn it back to you when I get the chance, all that stuff. Customers without whatever they ordered for an extra month or two, that's not going to be a typical nice way to do it so you know had the guy you know uh gave him the shipping label all that other stuff um and yeah i took care of it in two seconds it was i literally took a paper towel wiped it off and sent it back Ready to him. Go. Yeah. yeah it was it was that was that simple but the phone call you know because he was like hey i'm about to leave a review on Welp on yelp <laughs> um you know, hey, I'm about to leave this review, um, you know, but I want to give you the chance to, to fix it before I leave this review, blah, 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 blah. And simple phone call, boom, we're good to go. You know, life's easy. Um, but then you also have, you know, the, the opposite of that, where they are just going to town on, you know, they are not happy. This is not it. And there is a certain point of what can you do? Is there, enough, is there anything that you can do to even make this person happy? Are they just that person that is just that way that you're never gonna make them happy? They're just a grumpy, grumpy person. And <laughs> you, have to, yeah. you have to deal with that. So a lot of it is with someone like that is just softening it as much as possible. You know, there is a certain point where you have to kind of admit to yourself that this person just isn't gonna be happy. Um, which is hard, especially, you know, we want to make all of our customers happy. We want to make sure that everyone is getting the ultimate treatment that they can have and that they love their product and they, they love the company. They love you, all of this stuff. But at the end of the day, there's sometimes you're just not going to be able to do it. Um, I had a guy, he was um, grumpy right off the bat. I mean, just the first interaction I ever had with the guy, he's a uh, probably in his late 60s, early 70s, just salt of the earth type guy. He's had a rough life and, you know, all that stuff. And you, you have to be sympathetic. You have to show grace, you yeah. know, we yes. try to reflect our, you know, faith in everything that we do, you know, try to be as positive a person as possible. And, you know, this guy just nonstop. I worked with this guy for probably about three months um in total before finally I had to just say hey John you know there's nothing left I can do for you man like I really really want to help you out but this is what I can do this is what I'm willing to do but at the end of the day I can't do anything more than that um and sometimes it's just gonna it's gonna sting you know it, it's <laughs> it, it's not great um but sometimes it, it just hard to solve those those problems um how would you say yeah. that a vendor can overcome a bad review and that let's say that person is just not going to take it down and mm -hmm. you know they're justified in doing so okay mm -hmm. but how do you move on from that do you like you know you can respond to that person but do you go as far as to maybe like put it under the description of something like you know um, not liable for this and this certain situation or like what, what would that look like? Yeah. I mean, of course you always want to cover yourself yeah. as much as possible legally. 
um, and, you know, being safe as possible. So if you have, you know, something that, yes, you would typically have no problem warranting or something like that, it still doesn't hurt to put it in the description. You know, it can be in the small little letters, you know, we all kind of do it, you put it down in the bottom, hey, not liable for this, you know, excessive wear and tear, whatever that is, you know, but it is up to the company's discretion on whatever that looks like. Yeah. And obviously the review itself, <laughs> they are gonna hurt. You know, it's one of those that it's just, it's hard. It's, it's not easy to see those reviews. Um, the best thing that you can do to combat a review is more reviews. So if you have the ability to go back, you know, and thankfully the company that I worked with Club Champion, we had an amazing sales system set up that I literally followed up with every customer that I had every three weeks after their uh, initial order, six months, one year and 18 months. So I had that con. sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. She's, she's having a good time um so um having those having the contact information for your customers is really important even if it's just an email and initially right when you send a product out um you can either put a, a note in with the product or you can send an email afterwards you know once you know that they, the customers received the order saying, hey, can you please go to Galley Life or can you go to our Google page or can you go to our Yelp page and leave a review um, for your product, company services. You get real specific on what you want them to talk about because a lot of people don't leave reviews because they don't, they're like, oh yeah, good product. Boring five-star review, most people are gonna just skim right over it. But if you give them kind of a, a template to leave a review, like, hey, what did you think of the product, first of all? What did you think about the shipping? Was it there on time? Was it, you know, satisfactory on that? It, did it come in good condition? And then, you know, what did you think about the company? What do you think about our service? That way they can leave a little bit longer review, you know, a full paragraph or so is, you don't need anything more than that. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's the, the number one way you can combat a bad review is with many more good reviews. Um, now, obviously, if your review page, Google, Yelp, all of those, they're gonna be able to, you're gonna be able to respond to that customer. Um, and everyone in the world is gonna be able to see that response, right? Just like on Amazon or anything else, yeah. it's on there for them to see. Um, making sure that that is very well put together and show that you're trying to work with the customer as much as possible. Um, obviously they're not gonna see the customer's response to that typically. Um, sometimes I can, sometimes I can't, just depends on the, the product page that you're on. Um, but definitely showing, you know, hey, sorry this happened. What can I do to either make it happen? Which typically in that you want to show an answer, right? Not just, hey, I would love to take care of that. Give us a call. Yeah. That, that is a good way to do it, but I feel like a lot of people kind of see past that as just a, oh yeah, they're trying to cover it, like whatever. Be detailed on what you're willing to do for that person in that response um, okay. that other people can see. So that way they can see, okay, hey, if I have this problem that this customer had, this is what they're gonna do, you know, to help fix whatever the problem is. Yes, I love that. So basically it just goes down to the details from right. putting something in the box to putting something under your description mm -hmm. um, to even writing back to the reviews that you get. And I think and especially all of them, all of them. yeah, all of them, <laughs> all just the bad ones. Yeah, I, I would say responding to all of your reviews is an amazing way to continue to generate business and return customers, um, as well as you know, smoothing out those, you know, those problematic ones. But even if someone sends a five-star review or a four-star, three-star, however many stars we're playing with here, um, you know, if there's a way to respond directly to it on the, the page, do that. Or typically when someone leaves a review, you're going to get their email. Send an email saying, thank you so much for your amazing review. I appreciate it. Um, you know, whatever you want to say on that end, you know, just showing them and just saying sim the simple statement of thank you for your business goes 
a long way in any type of sales or any type of business that you're in. Um, you know, thank you for investing your money with me. Um, that's, that's huge. That's perfect. So just the idea of doing it as quickly as possible once you do get that attitude or behavior and then um, making sure that you respond with some way to rectify it. <laughs> um, anything else that you want to share with us? Yeah, I mean, I think especially with problem customers as well, um, we tend to want to do everything possible right away to help the, the customer, which I totally understand. Uh, but it's a lot of a also don't sell yourself short when you're doing it as well. Um, you know, don't throw the whole kitchen sink out with the, the, everything too, you know, yeah. make sure that you're incrementally working towards it, you know, because at a certain point, we all have a bottom line to protect, you know, we all want to make sure that we're not losing a ton of money, we're not losing any customers, things like that. But, um, you know, stand up for yourself. This is your company. This is your brand. This is your product. You stand behind it. Be confident in that. You know, still, we have to apologize. We have to be like, hey, sorry, this happened. But making sure in some way, obviously, it depends on the person that you're with, that sometimes like that guy that I worked with for three months, you know, that was just the grumpiest human being I've ever worked with. There's a certain point that I was like, hey, John, like, this is just not possible. I can't do this for you. I, I would love to, but what you're asking is not feasible, you know, or something like that yeah. in what I can possibly do for you. Um, so making sure that you're, at the end of the day, you're still, you know, don't let a customer ruin your whole day, week, month, whatever. Obviously, yes, it's gonna affect you to a certain point, but just in some way, you know, kind of make sure that you're still standing up for you and your brand. Um, I love that. I that, love that. Super that, important. You know, Nike's not letting customers stand all over them. You know, that's, yeah, and not to be discouraged because everybody's just going to get that eventually. Like it's just a rite of passage almost. <laughs> um, the roller coaster, buckle up. Like it's, it's, you'll have the coolest highs and the worst lows. And, <laughs> In, in sales and it's it's a fun ride to be on you know to overcome those obstacles but a problem customer especially in today's age is going to be the number one thing that you're going to see a lot of um but hopefully the, the kind of few things that i kind of mentioned hopefully help the, your vendors and um you know anybody who's listening to kind of have a few ways to, at least to help mediate the problems Yes, thank you so much, Caleb. Um, last question. Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear about the way that you, um, you know, you talked about bringing God into everything that, that we do, obviously, in every area of our lives, including working. Um, so what songs have been helping you through the season? Um, or what, what has been touching your heart lately? Yeah, so obviously, I mean, 2020 2021 has been everyone's favorite time best years yes ever in history of okay. just amazingness mm. um but for me you know especially when it comes to a worship song i kind of threw a little old school back in um god is able hill song um the live recording uh, i've been listening to it to my way to work um every day for the most part um yeah. uh, just kind of going into it just the the field that I'm in now is under a lot of scrutiny and a lot of um a lot of eyes are on us and what we're doing um and not in a good way um but just being able to say you know yes God is able he can do everything you know he is you know whatever I'm about to get into today he's able to overcome that I just need to give it all to him. Um, and so that's really the, the number one, um, you know, song I've been kind of jamming out to, um, you know, especially that was my, that was my high school days playing that in praise team. Um, oh my where, you know, that the solo hits me, you know, it's a simple solo, but it's a uh, guitar <laughs> solo in that, <laughs> um, you know, definitely I'll put it in repeat a couple of times, uh, 
in my 30 minute drive to work, so. Yes, okay, well, that sounds great. Um, so I'm going to pray us out before I do. Do you have any last thoughts that you wanna give or anything like that? No, I mean, just uh, wish everyone luck, you know, especially, you know, God's blessings in this time period. You know, I know a lot of, uh, a lot of uncertainty and a lot of uh, pressure and stress and, you know, a bunch of different um, emotions, anger and everything like that. But I just pray that um, God blesses all of you and your businesses, that they thrive and they grow and that, um, you know, your brands are uh, representing what you want them to do. Um, and that you all enjoy the, uh, the process, enjoying the, uh, the grind and enjoying the, uh, the business is what makes a, a business successful, um, is enjoying the, the hard work that it puts into it, um, at the end of the day. So if you're pouring love into your product and pouring love into your business, it'll, it'll do well. All right. Excellent. Thank you, Caleb. So we'll go ahead and pray. Jesus, thank you so much for coming here and sitting with us and having this conversation. Um, I pray that you give us love for the people that are hard to love. You are excellent at giving so much grace to everyone. So I pray that if in a moment we forget um, or we fall short, that you will always be there to remind us that you're there to help us, that your grace is sufficient, even for moments that are difficult regarding customers or even if in your personal life. Thank you, Jesus, for, for being present and being exactly who you are because that's everything we need. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, Caleb, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to add this at the end. Um, so, I just, I would like for you to tell people where they can find you. If they want to just learn more or see what's up with you. Yeah. So, um, in my career change that I've recently done. One of my, the main things that I know you had to kind of looked at um, is no longer being used. Um, so my personal, you know, Instagram is just caleb.3c. Um, any of my, so I've also got a photography videography business on the side that I do. Um, all of those projects that I've been working on, especially uh, the video side, um, a lot of those you can find at Every King and Commoner. Uh, they're a local band here in my area of some of the best musicians that I get to call friends as well. Um, you can see them on YouTube and on Facebook. Also, Cody Christian Music on Facebook just got done doing a, an amazing video um, a series, you know, a, a group of videos for him that he's been releasing as you go through. Um, all of those guys are amazing Christian dudes. They're, you know, some of my best friends, former roommates. Um, on there so that's a, a fun project and great music if you're uh into kind of a fusion of country slash literally everything um type music um as well all right thank you perfect now <laughs> this will be our official goodbye there we go <laughs> Bye.